Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. Dr. Roberts discusses the features of specific organisms under direct microscopic examination using multiple preparations. This module examines Cryptococcus. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Sheriff, sure, for that introduction. I have nothing to disclose. This is a, an ongoing presentation that focuses on the individual or groups of organisms as seen in a direct examination of clinical specimens. The next two slides show you the different methods that can be used for detecting these fungi in clinical specimens, and some of those are stains that may not be used for staining fungi, but they can be found there if one has uh, the ability to remember to look for fungi in those particular stains. The next slide just shows you a continuation of the methods that we can be used in clinical microbiology for seeing fungi. The next slide shows you an example of Cryptococcus neoformans. Crypto means hidden, and coccus, as you know, refers to a round cell. When they first described Cryptococcus neoformans, they had never seen a thing like it because it was a surround cell that was surrounded by what looked like a capsule. And so they called it crypto because it was a cell that was a was coccus that was hidden by a capsule. At that time, they had never seen a cell like that before, so they called it neoformans, which means new form. Cryptococcus neoformans has a hallmark of producing cells that vary in size, anywhere from 2 to 15 microns, and with Cryptococcus gaddii, the cells can be as large as 60 microns. The cells generally, as a rule, are nice and round, they're spherical. They may or may not have a capsule. The buds, if they're present, have narrow necks. You may find pseudohyphae present with some of these uh, cells of Cryptococcus. So in this particular slide, you can see in the background the size variation is apparent, and that's a hallmark of identifying Cryptococcus neoformans along with the budding cells that are, have narrow necks on them. So the next slide is a phase contrast photomicrograph, and you can see a big, thick, thick gelatinous capsule around the perimeter of a central cell. The central cell is the yeast cell of Cryptococcus, and the other part is a polysaccharide capsule of Cryptococcus. The next slide shows you the very same thing. The capsule is around the perimeter, the central cell is round, and then there is a bud that appears to be pinched off and narrow-necked, and that's what you see with Cryptococcus neoformans. This is just a larger view showing you, next slide showing you essentially the same thing. Sometimes you see some granular material within the cell, but it's a narrow neck bud, and the capsule, if it happens to be present, is, uh, is helpful. This is calculated for white on the next slide, showing you that the cells vary in size. They, they show up very well in this fluorescent stain. This stain is a fluorescent brightener. It stains the chitin in the cell walls. It makes the cells fluoresce, uh, depending on the filter, either blue-white or yellow-green, as you can see here. And these cells vary in size. You can see the very large ones or the small ones. And on the lower right-hand side, about maybe 5 o'clock, you notice there's a cell that is budding and has a pinched-off bud present. The various in size of the cells and the narrow neck buds that are helpful to, to identify this organism. Next slide is calcul for white, showing you essentially the same thing. And in this case, it's hard to tell. This is Cryptococcus deformans. You see on the, uh, about maybe 2 o'clock or 1.30, there's a collapsed cell, looks cup-shaped, and you notice some of the other cells just appear to be round, and some of them are a little bit larger than others, but you would have to look around on the whole slide to get a consensus of what is there. The next slide is an acid fast stain, the Kenyan acid fast stain that we use for staining mycobacteria. This happens to be the counter stain of methylene blue in the background that does not stain mycobacteria, but in this case, it stains numerous cells of Cryptococcus neoformans, and they're primarily in the center. And you can see some there are about maybe six or seven cells in there. Uh, one has a chain of like three of them sitting together. And if you didn't think about microbiology in general, you'd, you would miss those cells. 
And so in this case, you have to look around a bit more and decide if it's going to be Cryptococcus or what it's going to be. But if you look at the cells, top two cells in that cluster on the right-hand side, you notice that around those cells there is something that appears to be kind of feathery around their perimeter. And that's a polysaccharide capsule of Cryptococcus neoformans. It's around actually around all those cells. It is kind of feathery around the outside. This next slide is showing the same thing, except that these appear to be the beginning of a pseudohypal strand. And certainly with Cryptococcus, you can see that. There are some other cells in there about 6 o'clock and about maybe 5 o'clock where you can see round cells of Cryptococcus neoformans that have this capsule. And it looks almost like there are projections sticking out from the sides of that just a capsule where it's constricted away from the space. This is what Cryptococcus neoformans can look like. Now, this particular slide is a PAS stain slide. And all the cells of Cryptococcus neoformans here are about the same size, probably right around 2 microns. You notice there's a clear space around the outside of the E cell. That's the capsule. Here you would certainly have to think about Cryptococcus neoformans. The next slide is the phase contrast photomicrograph of a pleural fluid from a patient with HIV. The patient had a pneumonia and a lot of pleural effusion. They actually removed some of the effusion, looked at it underneath the microscope, and what we see are all these cells in there, and the, the larger part of the cell is the capsule, and the central cell, the central part that's round, is the cell of the yeast of Cryptococcus neoformis. Same thing here. And then the next one, you can see what looks like a germ tube, and the one at the top coming out of this, this cell. And that you do see that with Cryptococcus neoformis. Here you see about maybe 5 o'clock, you see the very same thing. You see a germ tube coming out of there. And the other cells are pretty much uh, single cells with a capsule around them. This is a right stain from a bone marrow. And it's not uncommon to find Cryptococcus neoformans in bone marrow or in blood, other body fluids, where there's disseminated disease. And here you see in the center, you see cells that vary in size. It's a very large one. The lower cell is very large compared to the other, about twice the size of the other two. But you'd need to move around and look at the, all the fields to see what's out there, but just instead of just looking at this one field. But these cells are nice and round. Here's another bone marrow, and you can see the cells that uh, have a space around the outside, and they're pretty much in the center. You can see the cells are the darkly stained ones, and there's a space around the outside. Notice that the cells do not touch each other. And the reason for that is that the capsule separates them. And if you look at the lower part of the slide, right about 6 o'clock, all those are platelets in there that stain with the, uh, the right stain. This is another example of the right stain. You can see the cells up at the top and along the left-hand side. They're actually all around in all the whole slide. At the left-hand side, right about 8 or 9 o'clock, is where you see the yeast cells with the big space around the outside, and those are encapsulated yeast. And if you look at the top, you'll see there are four of them up there, and those are cells are encapsulated. That's where the clear area is around those, and that's what neoformins would look like. And just the next slide is just the same thing. You can see the bud, though, on those two in the center where it looks pinched off. This is a hallmark of Cryptococcus. It's a capsule around the outside, if it's there. It may not always be there. And then that narrow neck bud. The next slide shows you essentially the same thing without the, the narrow neck buds on it. You see some cells that are uh, surrounded by a clear space a little bit, and that's what the Cryptococcus would look like. They're the only place you see them on this slide is in the center. This happens to be what we call a cell count of a spinal fluid, where they centrifuge the spinal fluid on the cytospin preparation, and then they stain it with the right stain. And all these cells are Cryptococcus neoformans, all of them. And you notice they have buds on them, they have narrow neck buds. Some of the cells are larger than others, and when you see that hallmark, those are two hallmark features of Cryptococcus. This is a gram stain. Gram stain appears to be over decolorized. It's red. The, the uh, saffronin shows the red color, but you can see the cells have a space around the outside. And that's Cryptococcus neoformans. Same thing on the next slide. Very hard to recognize for sure if that's what it is. So this is just part of the whole slide that was looked at. The next slide shows you a, a uh, gram stain, showing you that it's been overstained with the, the uh, crystal violet. 
and you use a cell in there somewhere you can't even see it actually on the left hand side and the right hand side you can see two cells but all the capsular material is stained with the crystal violet and it's overstained. Next slide shows you a, another slide where the crystal violet is stained, the, the cryptococcus deformed G cell, but not overstained it. And you can see the different morphology of features. You can see that some of the cells are larger than others. And you can see there's a space around them. The lighter red is the, is the capsule. That's what cryptococcus deformed would look like on a gram stain. And it's a very good one there. Next slide is another example showing you the same thing. The next slide shows you a couple of yeast cells in there stained with a gram stain. The next slide shows you something that uh, we see more often than people think. And that's a, this is on the feathered edge of a gram stain. And this central cell is cryptococcus neoformans. If you notice in the center of it, you'll see some what looks like basophilic stippling. Basophilic stippling is, a, is something you see that, that is characteristic of cryptococcus neoformans. This slide shows you something that uh, I refer to as basophilic stippling. There are some very difficult to recognize spots on this slide that look like basophilic stippling with a clear space around it. In each one of those areas where you see that, one is about maybe uh, 130 towards the top of the slide. One of it may be, I don't know, it's hard to tell or to describe exactly where they are, but if you look in the slide, you will see there are clear spaces with purple dots in them. That's the basophilic stippling that you see within the side of the cell of Cryptococcus neoformans. The next slide shows you this even better. Look at the clear space with all the dots in there, and that is something that you see that more often than, than uh, people recognize, you simply have to look for it. And when you ask people if they've ever seen it before, Oftentimes they'll say, yeah, but I didn't know what it was. Well, it's Cryptococcus neoformans exhibiting basophilic stippling within a cell that did not stain. So you see the purple dots within an unstained cell. This next slide is a PAS stain slide that shows you the polysaccharide capsule of Cryptococcus neoformans in a very massive amount of organism on a slide. If you look closely, you can see that there's a yeast cell in the center of all the slides around the perimeter is this purple looking capsule. And the cells vary in size inside of, the, inside of that capsule. That's Cryptococcus. This is a pap smear. And if you look closely, you notice there are some cells that have a space around them. One about 5 o'clock, one about 9 o'clock, uh, about maybe 11.30. And this inside of that clear space is sort of a brownish looking cell that's kind of round and that's cryptococcus deformans that's a pap smear the next slide is a pap smear and the cells are also present in there except that they're brown in here and these don't exhibit the space around the outside as much as the previous slide did the brown cells in this slide are cryptococcus deformans without a capsule the next slide shows you the same thing there in the center is a cell there are several cells in there that are sort of lightly brown pigmented. Those are cryptococcus neoformans. You would need to look at the whole slide to be able to, to decide if that's what it is before you made a decision. This is a pap smear. This next slide is a pap smear, and there you can see more of those cells. They're easier to see here. And all the, the kind of brownish looking cells are cryptococcus neoformans, and they vary in size. And that's a pap smear. The next slide is a pap smear showing the much better where you can see the round cells in the center of a, of a right, big round cell. The large part of the cell that is surrounding that brown cell is the capsule. The interior of the cell where it's brown is the yeast cell. And on the one, you can see there's a bud beginning to form on the left-hand side. And at the top right, about maybe 2 o'clock, there's one that's beginning to bud too. The next slide shows you essentially the same thing. These cells are varying size. You can see one almost looks like it has a germ tube on it. The next slide shows you one that does have a germ tube on it. And the cells vary in size on that one. And it's not uncommon to find that. And the next one shows you a cell that is totally encapsulated with a germ tube that is actually branching. So that whole thing is, is surrounded by a capsule. And that's a pap smear. Another thing that has been used by many laboratories for, for a long time is the end ink preparation. You simply take a drop of India ink and you place it with some sediment from centrifuge spinal fluid. 
If you saw a situation like this, the number of cells in there would be much too great to be causing infection. This happens to be a collection of bacteria that are probably found in the ink in bottle that's con and contaminate the India ink bottle. The next one shows you talc crystals from the glove powder from a, a clinician who's done the lumbar puncture. And the next slide shows you red cells and you can see on the left hand side looks a little bit concave. The next slide shows you red cells and then this, there are two white cells that are very apparent in there. The next slide shows you yeast cells. If you had a patient with meningitis contain this many yeast, it would be much more of a problem than you can imagine and so this would probably more likely represent contamination of the end ink bottle again with the yeast rather than a clinical infection. The next slide shows you uh, towel crystals in the background and one cell that is bright white and is overexposed within that white area that that clear area is supposed to be a yeast cell and that's Cryptococcus neoformans and the next slide would show you what it might look like a little bit better on another slide this is where there's only one cell seen in a sediment of spinal fluid from this patient's uh, spinal fluid. So you see the cell is round and has a capsule around the outside. That is the only thing that will perhaps will look like that. The next slide shows you a phase contrast photomicrograph of yeast cells. There are about four of them in there and they have a space around the outside and they vary in size. The next one is, a, is an Indian preparation where the light has been turned up way too high. And the carbon particles in there that are black look almost red. But basically what you see are the, the yeast cells in the center and the capsule that's polysaccharide is around the perimeter of that cell. And so this looks like a big round headlight. So that's Cryptococcus neoformans. Same thing here on this one. But the hallmark of this one is that you see cells that vary in size. There's some that are very small in the background, there's some that are very large in there, and they appear to be granular, and the, the cells appear to be granular internally. And the next one shows you the pseudohyphae, and that's a good example of what pseudohyphae look like. You can see that it look like they're yeast cells that have elongated and remain attached to each other, and they have a constriction at a point where they're attached. This happens to be from a bronchoscopy specimen, and all of these cells were just about the same size, right around 2 to 4 microns in size. Not all that usual to see one with this uh, consistency in size, but this is nevertheless the case that we saw a few years ago that uh, shows that the cells are small, probably around 2 microns, and they have that capsule around the outside. This is just another field over. The next slide showing the very same thing. So that's Cryptococcus neoformans. This is a uh, HD stained slide from a bone marrow, and in the very center you see one cell that's sitting there with a capsule around the outside of it, and the cells in the center, and that's Cryptococcus. This is another one H and E stained slide, and you can see many cells of Cryptococcus neoformans in there. Some of them are round, some of them are football shaped, and occasionally they appear to be football shaped whenever they start to collapse. Next slide shows you uh, an H and E, and you can see that there are several that are football shaped in here. The next slide shows you an, an H and E, showing you some collections of these cells, and notice that they vary in size, and they're not all necessarily so round. Uh, so they're supposed to be nice and spherical, but they don't always have to appear that way. But it's a variation in size that you see and a space around the outside of them. You notice that in some of those, are, they don't, the cells do not touch each other. And the reason for that is, again, is because the capsule is present. The next slide, you can see a better view of that. You can see that none of the cells are touching each other because of that capsule keeps them separated. Next one uh, shows you a, a touch prep from the lung. And if you happen to look at the cells in there, look, you can see some in the background that are extremely small to some that are very large. And that's what the hallmark is. You don't have to look any further once you see the various in size like that. You think of Cryptococcus neoformans. The next slide shows you uh, one that is not so clear, but it shows you the very same thing. Various in size of cells. And notice that none of them touch. Next slide shows you a long piece of pseudohyphae in there. And the yeast cells of Cryptococcus in the background. Well, this is a discussion of Cryptococcus neoformans. And shown you lots of slides there with the different morphologic features of Cryptococcus and a lot of variation upon those features to give you an idea that they don't all look the same.